In this video, I want to show you six different ways to create pie charts in R. We will start with the pie function that comes already installed with R. This function is easy to learn for beginners. When you already have experience with ggplot, then you can use the geomcall function in combination with coordinate polar to create pie charts. And once you understood how to use the geomcall function, you can create black and white pie charts that include patterns from the ggpattern package. However, the easiest function to use comes from the ggpubr package and is called ggpy. I will also show you the plotly function that has a type pi argument because this is one that's already interactive and allows you to host your graphics on web pages with HTML widgets. The pi3d function is more like a joke in case you want to create a 3d pie chart you can do that with the plotrix package. And then the pi donut function from the web r package allows you to create donut charts that combine multiple variables and can be quite informative. Let's get started with the code for the basic pi function. For the first chart we need some example data, so just five letters for category with five values. You can either store it in a data frame or create two vectors that hold your data. You just need to know how to access the relevant data, so either by using the value vector or by accessing it from the data frame. For the pi function this doesn't matter because all it needs is an X that holds the values and the labels that we feed the five letters from the category vector. This will lead to the same pie chart as if you would have worked with the data frame. Next, I want to add percentage to the label. You can of course add up all the values and if you divide this by the individual values you get percentages. Now you can multiply these by 100 and round it to one digit after the decimal point. Now we store these values in the percent column and additionally we can paste the percentage sign to this new percent column. We can also start our new label with the category name, add a column and a space. So now we have the information that A is 18.5%. We also store that in the data frame under the percent label column. And now we can use the pi function again to plot the pie chart with a bit more informative labels. Now you might notice a few things that are kind of odd. It starts here with A and then it goes counterclockwise B, C, D and E. You can always use the question mark or the help function on your function to learn more about how the function works and then you will see that it has an init angle where to start and you can also specify clockwise to be true or false and you can change the color, add a title, even change the line type or play around with the edges. So just to make the point, if you change border to green then you will see that the lines are now green and not black anymore. I now start at the angle of 90 degrees which is here and then it goes clockwise true in this direction this time. And if you change the line type, you can make dotted lines or dashed lines. Now, if you want to change the pie chart in a way that it goes from the biggest piece to the smallest, you have to change the order and rearrange it. The order function tells you how you have to choose the values to bring them in order. So it would tell you to first pick number 4, which is on the third row, then pick from the fourth row 8, then choose the first item 12, then the fifth item 16, and then the biggest item is 25. If we choose decreasing equals true, then the order is in reverse. And now it starts with the biggest one, item 2, 25. And this we can choose for row indexing. So the first item before the comma in the squared bracket on the data frame changes the row order. And now we have decreasing percentages. You can also use the reverse function in front of order to simulate this result. So then we would create a new data frame called example one order. Use this within the pi function. And now you can see that it starts with the biggest chunk first, B, and then goes E, A, D, C to the smallest one. Now one way to change the color of your pie chart is to use the rcolorbrewer package. There's a function that can create the hash code for the different colors based on a palette. So now you have five different colors that you can use within the pie function. So simply include it as the call argument. If you want to change the title, you can use the main function argument. So now we have new colors. And there's a legend function that you can run right after your plot where you can put a legend with a vector of names in the center or top left or bottom right corner, wherever you want, and then choose the same colors in the fill argument. And this way you can plot a legend on top of your pie chart. There are also built-in color functions in R that you can choose. For example, just rainbow 5 gives you these colors. Heat dot colors would look like this. Topo colors, CM colors, terrain colors. And as I said, the color brewer palette has quite a few options to choose from as well. 
Now I want to move on to the ggplot functions, gm call. You have to load the package and also the deployer package because we will do some data transformations. You can also just load the tidyverse. And the diamonds data set is included in the ggplot package. It holds over 50,000 rows of diamonds and I want to make a pie chart based on the five different levels of cut. If you pipe this data set into ggplot and put cut on the x-axis, geom bar would produce a bar chart. If you map the cut to the fill argument, you get color bar chart and the bar chart function works because it's counting all the instances of the different levels of cut here are the first 100 and then it creates bars depending on how often it encountered each level you can use the count function to count the numbers of instances per cut level i saved this result in a diamonds count data frame so now these results are stored for every cut variable we have an n and if you would try to use this data with cut on the x-axis and n for y-axis argument with the geombar function you would get an error and you would have to switch to the geom call function because this can map ends to the y-axis. Geombar also can work with this kind of data but then you have to set the stat argument to identity so it's not expecting to count different levels but that the number of n is already there. But for this pie chart tutorial I now want to only use the geom call function. Again, we calculate the percent with the mutate function by dividing the ends by the total number of data points and row diamonds. And then we create this label again. So now we have this to work with. If we map the cut also to fill, we color each bar. And now if you follow up this command with the core.polar function, you get something that already mimics a pie chart, but it's not quite what we want. And the first function of the core.polar function is it wants to know whether to map the angle to x or to y. And when we choose the y axis, we see that we made a mistake. And this came from setting the x axis to cut. What we actually want to do is set it to either one or to nothing, because now it will stack our data on top at position one. If we change that to empty, then it's just stacked on the X without a specific value. And when we follow up with the coordinate polar function, we already get what we want. For the pie chart, it's a bit more advantageous to set the color to black, which is the outside color. Fill is the inside. And by default, the start is at zero. If you would change it to half pi, it would move from here to a quarter circle and then go counterclockwise again. So we are okay with zero. And then usually to get rid of all this background and the labels and the access, you can modify the theme by following up different function arguments that you set to element blank. So you erase the background, access ticks, title and text. And you can shorten this by simply using the theme void, which does the exact same thing. If you want to add text to your pie chart, you would also have to map the percent label column within ggplot. So within the aesthetics mapping, we also say that label will be based on the percent label column. And now when you follow up with the geom text function, you can see that it adds the values, but it does it at the position of the value. So 9% is here. 40% is at the point 0.4, so it doesn't fit within the actual stacked boxes. And the way to change that is to use within geomtext the position argument and then this position underscore stack function with a vertical adjustment of 0.5, which is dead center. And now it puts all the values within the middle of the box. And now we would follow up with the chord polar function again and use theme void to create a pie chart that's labeled now. So the last thing I want to fix is change the order of the legend because I want to cut with the highest frequency on top. And now the fastest way to flip the legend so it goes from ideal to fair is to use the guides function and map fill to guide underscore legend reverse equals true. And now the legend is in reverse order. And for the final pie chart, I used scale fill manual to add five different values that I picked from the Adobe color wheel. With labs, you can change the legend name. So you can say that fill is mapped to cut. You can set a title with theme, plot title, element text, horizontal adjustment. You can put it into center and increase the size. And then you have your final pie chart with the geom call and corded polar function. Now, if you want to change this colorful pie chart to a black and white version, maybe for some publications, you can make use of the ggpattern package. I will link to a few websites that show you how you can use the ggpattern function. It comes with all kinds of different examples and how to create them. You can choose from a variety of different magic patterns, but also from something that's called 
polygon tiling, where you can choose hexagons and stars, triangulars, rhombiles, etc. When you use the help function, it tells you that it basically comes with a pattern function that's matching all the other ggplot functions that exist. So you can have boxplot underscore pattern and geomcall underscore pattern. And what you have to do first, within the mapping, you now have to include mapping to cut to a whole bunch of pattern function arguments, which then produces your stack column charts with a different pattern for each of the different cuts. And then within geom call pattern, you can choose white for fill as the background, color black is the lines between the pie chart chunks, and then pattern fill means that all these different shapes can be filled with a certain color, and the pattern color is now the lines outside of the pattern. I just set this to yellow and orange to make it more clear what's going on. If you change the pattern density by increasing it, you would see that now the patterns get bigger up to a point where they almost fill the complete area. And the scale pattern spacing can be used to increase the area between the pattern. So now the lines and dots become more spaced apart from one another. And if you change the area to a really small range, it becomes really dense. Only two more things I want to show with regards to the GG pattern functions. You can change the pattern, which I did here. I choose for the pattern within Geom called pattern the polygon tiling, and I mapped the pattern type to cut before this argument wasn't included here. When you do that, when you map the cut to pattern type, then you have to follow up with the scale pattern type discrete function, where you now can specify five different choices that come from the polygon tiling. So for example, hexagons are here, squares are here, triangular for ideal cut. And then you can also use the scale pattern fill manual to assign a background color to each of the chunks to make them stand out a bit more. And if you want to find out what patterns you can choose from for the polygon tiling, you can use the help function again and get all the different options. The ggpy function from the ggpubr package is probably one of the most useful and easy to use and powerful functions to create pie charts. You have easy arguments to switch the label position from inside to outside of the pie. The font can be specified with size, boldness and color in one argument. You can even pick a font family. You have palettes available already for the color and you can add a theme, so more information you find with the help again. And here I just created a simple example data frame with category, value and percent label again. And the ggpy function wants to know what the data is, so I hand over the data frame. It wants to know how to decide how big the piece of the pies are supposed to be, so I give it the value. And then if you label it with the percent label, you get this text with the percent sign. If you want to label it based on category, you get the name of the brands. Now you can also fill it by the category values. So now it will choose a different color for the different brands. The color white will make the lines white, so separating the pieces a little bit. And then in palette, you can just hand over six colors by the hash code. If you want to show the actual percentage and the categories, you will use percentages for label, but then map the color to the category. That's where you get your legend from. As I said, it's really simple to move the label position from outside to the inside, and then you can adjust the label font to white to change the color of the text. And you can follow up with the GG title function to add a text to your plot and then adjust it in the middle and then use horizontal just to center it and specify the size for the title. Moving on to another powerful function called plot underscore Lee from the plot Lee package, which you have to load with the library function. And this is not shown in plots, but in the viewer panel because it's interactive. So you can hover over with your mouse and it will tell you the category of cut, the value, and then the percentage label. The plotly function comes with a few more arguments that you can change. Most importantly is to select the type you want to plot. In our case, it was pi. Then you map the labels to the cut variable using this tilde sign. You map the values to the percent column. Sort by default is false. So there's a way to change the colors of the slices of the pie and also change the color and the width of the lines by using the marker function argument where you hand over a list that holds the color and the line arguments. And for colors, I use the colors function that lists all the colors that are available in R. And if you just sample five at random, based on this seed, you will get the same as I did, which are these five. And then you hand those over to the plotly function to map them to your cut levels. If you change sort to true, 
it will start with the biggest here at this line and then go counterclockwise. If you want to add a title to this chart, you would pipe your result into the layout function where you can choose title as a function argument and then hand over the text you want to plot as the title. And now one thing with Plotly is that you can actually save this plot in an object like P and then turn this into an HTML widget which can then be displayed on a website, keeping its interactivity. The last pie chart I want to show is a 3D version, which I strongly recommend against using because it really distorts the proportions, which are already hard enough to judge based on angles. So here I just created four vectors holding values, percentages and labels. With the pie function, you already know how to plot this in two dimensions. And now if you use the Plotrix package, there is a pie 3D function available that has all kinds of arguments where you can change the start point, the radius, the height and the angle of your 3D chart. And one of these arguments is explode, which tells you how far apart these slices will be. If you set it to zero, they are connected, but with any value above, it gets exploded by various degrees. The last example makes use of the PyDonut function from the WebR package, which is extremely helpful to judge proportions based on two different variables. So you can turn the Titanic data, which comes as a combination of multiple tables, into a data frame, which holds the class, sex, age, and survived status of the different passengers with certain frequencies. And if we want to turn this into a summary data frame, we can call TCS for Titanic class and survived. We can either group by class and survived status and then summarize the sum of frequency. So adding all these different options together, which would then look like this. We just keep class, survived and remove age and sex to just have these results. You can also use the count function by counting class survived and put in the weight of frequency. So now it knows the counting is based on these values. With the frequency as the weight, you get the same results with the count function as if you would have grouped by and summarized. And now we can use this to create these kind of charts. So if we just hand over the data and we map class and survived with count equals to n, you would see that the biggest slice is for crew, where only 24% survived, but for first class, which is the smallest group, 62% survived. Now, if you don't want these numbers to add up to 100% within each group, you can set ratio by group to false, and now the outer circle will add up to 100%. And you could say 9.2% fall into the group of first class and survived. 30% were crew and died. If you change the order of class and survived, then the outer and the inner circle will flip. So now instead of four classes with survived and not survived, the inner circle will be only two options, survived and not, and then the classes are outside. It's again the 30% crew that were in the not survived part. If we set ratio by group to true, now within the survived, you can see that 30% were crew, 28% were first class, but now you would see that this ratio is completely different in the not survived area of this chart. Here now first class is a lot smaller than the crew. You can use the explode function argument to have certain parts of your chart being pushed out. You can also add a title again. You can use explode donut to remove the outer layer even more. So now the donut is the outside, the pie is the inside. The R0 tells you how big the circle is. If you set this to zero, then it becomes a completely filled pie chart. If you set it to 0.8, the center hole gets really big. And R1 refers to the outside ring. So if you set them to 0.4 and 0.8, you get the same width of the outer layer and the inner one. So now you know how to create all kinds of different pie chart. Please try out all these different functions and decide which one is the one for you based on your skill and to what extent you need to use it. If you like this content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a like. That would mean a lot to me. And then I hope to see you here again for the next video at the Data Digest channel. Bye bye.